Um, I'm Brian Hurley. I work at a uh, company I'm just setting up here called Business Performance Improvement. Um, my background is in process improvement. So I've worked in the aerospace for 18 years. My background is in statistics and quality management. And so over the last decade or two, I've been working on how to get employee ideas generated so people can improve their own work um, and teach them efficiency techniques, a lot of it derived from Toyota and other larger corporations and how they've been successful at reducing costs, uh, improving value to their customers. Um, and then just looking at industrial engineering techniques, and kind of merging them together to figure out how can we, how do we get people to um, identify waste and inefficiencies in their processes that they run every day, and then bring up those ideas and try out different situations to see if it actually saves them time and adds more value to their customers. It could be internal customers, like someone in their organization that they hand off data or information to, or it could be something that they're actually delivering to an end customer. And so one of the things we want to talk through is this concept of 5S, which is one of the, um, I think one of the more simpler tools for people to get started with, and it's one I like to start with, with a lot of groups, because it's fairly straightforward and it's similar to stuff they've done before, except there's a little bit more structure and rigor to that. So I'd like to show you how this technique can be applied to not only a um, physical workspace, but also in the digital workspace as well. So um, do you guys have uh, computers or laptops with you at all? Okay, so we'll, through this exercise, I'd like to spend a little bit of time actually going through one of your folders and have you start to organize that. So there'll be a little bit of lecture and a little bit of working time to go through that. So I guess as you're thinking through this, think about what, which folder on my drive or on the, um, in my space somewhere that I can go through fairly quickly in a, in a 15, 20 minutes of time. May not get through all of it, but at least get you started on that. So I'll give you a couple more ideas to think about. So that's kind of the plan for today. So this is the agenda today. We'll cover um, just a quick definition on 5S. We'll look at some benefits I'll talk briefly on the lean concept that it derives from. We'll do a little numbers game exercise to go through the different steps. And I'll show you the worksheet that we'll use as kind of a starting point of where we're at and then how we can track after results. Um, then we'll go through actually the exercise for today and start at least through the steps as far as we can. And then uh, hopefully you'll continue with that effort and try to finish that up if we don't get through it to today. And then talk about the um, any results or temporary results you've gotten so far. Okay. So 5S is a, um, it was derived from five Japanese words and they all had to do with a, a process around organization. And so those have been translated in many different ways when they brought those back from Japan and looked at more, more, more the correct English terms or as close as they could get for English terms to match that. So what they came up with was uh, first to sort. That doesn't show up in there. First sort then simplify, and then shine or sweep, um, standardize or stick to it, and then uh, sustain. So you'll see maybe different uh, versions of those if you do some research on 5S, but that's the, those are the, the core um, definitions there. But the goal is to come up with an organized work environment where everything has a place, everything is in its place, and then it's ready and available for you. So when things are put away, it's ready for someone else to pick up and use right away. It doesn't require someone to clean up someone else's mess or uh, deal with it later. So it seems like it's um, like spring cleaning, but what I would say is it goes a lot more detailed than that. Spring cleaning is usually like the first S. And so a lot of groups we work with they do a pretty good job with the first one, but as they get further along in this process, it gets more and more complicated and it's, it requires a little bit more discipline to do that. So um, it takes some time to develop those, those skills to be getting through all those steps. And um, that, that's the initial thought people says, oh yeah, it's, it's, I'm just gonna clear out a bunch of stuff. Um, that's just one step of that. So we want to keep get in the mindset of thinking 
the three, four, five steps that are involved with this. So physically, that's where it started. It started as an exercise to organize a physical space. So you can see that on this one, the top picture you've got just uh, chaotic and, and things are not organized in a manner where you know if it's supposed to be there, if it's in good working condition, if it's ready for use, um, what it is, any kind of labels. Um, or at the bottom, you have clear markings on the floor where things should go. There's labels over what it should look like. Things look neat and nice. It looks like it was put away correctly. Um, it's up off the floor as much as possible. There's a uh, consistency in the coloring. There is um, just a much more nicer organized space. You can even see physically where things would go. And so you're, you're also limiting what can be in that space because you can't put more than certain things, otherwise it's gonna go past the lines. And so those are some of the characteristics that we would look for in the physical space. So uh, benefits is that we um, will see from doing a 5S from the digital side would be on reducing errors and mistakes of grabbing the, an outdated file or a template because there's too many to pick from and it's disorganized. So I'm picking up the wrong revision, um, doesn't have the right information on there, doesn't have the latest or greatest information, um, the frustration of looking for, for files. So that's where a lot of the efficiency gains come in is the ability to find files quickly, you know where they're at, and you have confidence it's the right one. And that's because that's not a valuable use of your time is to be searching around for those files. And that will save time, of course, um, especially if you have to the point of, I'll have to recreate this because I can't find it. That's a lot of wasted time. Um, and then if you have new people who are, who are getting into your workspace, and having to look through it, it's quicker for them to get ramped up and trained on it because there's a structure and organization to it. So there's time savings there. Um, it could even result in money savings through less storage space, especially if you're paying for that space and any kind of maintenance costs that might go along with that. The other thing is that it helps identify and make problems more visible. And that's really the, the goal that, um, that this was developed for was to force things to be obvious when things are out of place, which highlights that there's a potential problem. You know, if I have something missing in that picture, where is the floor cleaner? Um, it's a quickly, it's a quick question to say, where is it? And why isn't it where it's supposed to be? And that, that can identify gaps or weaknesses in the processes that an organization has. And so that's really the key idea. With, in a disorganized space, it's hard to tell if something's wrong because you can't really see it. Um, so sometimes like in the physical world, like in a manufacturing setting, we would have um, some a machine that's leaking oil, but if there's stuff cluttered around it, you would never see that oil leak for days or weeks. And then the problem is not identified right away. Where if it's a very clean space and nothing's around it and it's well organized, the minute you, it starts leaking, you would see that right away. And so the same kind of idea, if there's disorganization and all of a sudden you see files out of place, you say, what's going on here? What's, what's happening with our processes? What's happening with our organization? Or who's into the files that's setting them up incorrectly? It's easy to tell right away that things are, we're losing the recipe, we're losing the structure of our naming conventions, stuff like that. Any other reasons you can think of that might be beneficial for getting the files more organized? Peace of mind. <laughs> Peace of mind, okay. Yeah. Just uh, feeling like there, there's some, um, like the organization side of it, or just feeling like there's some control over? Yeah, like, so projecting ahead like that, if a problem arises, knowing that it'll be easier to take care of. So okay. just like, feel like mentally feel more relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like you, you got the organization. If, it, if there is a problem, it's gonna be much smaller because mm -hmm. you've got some discipline or structure in place already, okay? Any other thoughts? Yeah. I was going to say it allows for growth a lot more efficiently and a lot more easily. So if it's something that you can replicate easily, then that means your business, your work, whatever you're doing is more likely to grow. And you're more prolific. Prolific. Yeah. You don't uh, waste your time doing something over and over. It's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you have more clients and they have the same structure and that builds on it, it's mm -hmm. can go right to it. Yeah. 
So this is an example I did, and this is just on my own drive. So you can see that the, I, this is a folder I picked. It was been building up over the years, and there really was not, I had a couple folders labeled. I have six, so I had six folders, 130 megabytes, 121 files. And then um, after I went through this exercise of getting more organized with it, I dropped to 84 megabytes. I added more subfolders, but, um, and I kept about the same number of files. So I actually didn't even delete that many. Um, but I can see differences in the amount of, so the space was down, went down 35%. Um, I increased the number of subfolders, which may not be a bad thing, because now it's maybe easier for me to find, which it is. Um, and then I have another example where I've cut down the total number of files quite a bit as well. So it just depends on your situation. Some folders are gonna be more about getting rid of stuff. Some things are just gonna be more organized. Other situations, um, you may just wanna have the, um, the structure in a different way. So it depends on the purpose of your, your setup. This is a different one I had where cut the space down 84%. Um, added a few more folders, cut out about 15% of the files. But the, the ni nice, nice thing about this one is I actually did a quick timing study to see how long it would take me to find certain files in that folder before and after. And so before it was taking me just 12 seconds, or it was taking 12 seconds, but then I got it down to five seconds. Um, and then I had a, a list of questions I was looking for. Before it took 10 seconds, down to four seconds. I said, all right, well, five, six seconds, what's that? Um, that, that's not that big a deal, but if you think about over the course of a week or a course of a month or a course of a year, how much that adds up, um, it can be quite a bit of savings. Um, and then the third one was finding some photos from a conference. It took 30 seconds before, and then I got it to eight seconds. So again, that idea is that it, that's really where some of the benefits come in is, is the time savings on there. So the first uh, column, first line in your table, uh, folder size is the size of any one folder or the size the, of all folders the, together? Yeah, the folder that I selected to organize. Yeah, okay. so it was this in the Portland size of folder. Me, including the subfolders? Or mm -hmm. just including some folders. Including subfolders, yep. So, so everything reduced, below that. You've reduced the amount of information by a factor of 10 almost. Yep. But you've lost information. What do you mean you've lost, lost many percent of your information? Maybe it's variable, maybe it's not, but you've lost information in the process. Yeah, I took out the stuff I didn't feel was valuable. That you knew was had no value. So you had a Yep. You had you already had a knowledge of that. Right. Okay. Actually in this one, one of the bigger things I did is I I already had it stored in another location. So I had duplicates. Well, you archived it yeah. because it was not uh, Timely pertinent. Right. So I think we had a we had a team drive that I could store that on. So it didn't have to be on my folder. So I was keeping it on my drive because they were my pictures that I took. And then I also had uploaded them already to the Google Drive for our team. So I basically had duplicates to be safe, but I don't need those duplicates. Okay. So then I short linked, I think this is this, I think I short linked one of them in the in the photos to this cloud drive that I already had on there. Um, and then on my computer, I actually back up a lot of files. So that was eating up quite a bit of space too. So when you need to say backup, it was not backed up before? Um, well, it was in two locations before. Okay. So sorry, yeah, yeah. So it, I, on my computer, if I have files in my folder, it's getting backed up to the cloud. It's getting backed up. Yep. Okay. So now I can cut that down a little bit. And so I have different levels as I, how much I back up, I could pay a little bit more for. So as I go through the rest of these folders, I'll be able to get it to a point where I can lower the amount of backups, the size of the backups that I have with my service that I use. Okay. So that's ultimately what I'm trying to do is get back down to, you know, cut 10 more bucks out of the backup service I'm using. Okay. Any other questions about that? So space can be valuable. Um, the time is really where I think you're gonna get um, some bigger benefits. So again, I mentioned that this came out of um, a lot of the lean concepts that were captured and, and um, observed and tried, they tried to quantify and describe what they were observing uh, in Japan for a lot of the auto manufacturers. So they came up with this term called lean and um, it's probably not the best term they could have come up with. It sounds like it's 
cut everyone down to the bare minimum and, and scrape by and everybody just overwork because you don't have enough resources. It's really not that concept. It's really more about um, moving your resources to where the customer really wants and then eliminating all the waste and inefficiency that's eating up a lot of your, your people's time. And so it's, it's understanding what your customer really wants, what they value, and then minimizing all the other stuff that they don't value or don't care about. Um, and so it's not it's supposed to be a cost cutting measure. Because if you go into it saying, here's how we're gonna eliminate jobs or here's how we're gonna cut money, um, then people catch on to that if you have employees or other people in your organization. And they really don't like, it does, it's not a fun way to participate. If it's more about how do we make your life easier, make your work easier, more rewarding, more fun, and take out some of the stress and the, the inefficiencies and the frustrations you have, naturally you will start to gain some more time. You'll be able to do more with the same amount of time. People will like the jobs better, there's more engagement, they get to bring up their ideas. So it's really more of a positive way of approaching improvement. And so um, it's really about working smarter, not just, you know, we're gonna cut our staff down and then now you gotta take on everyone else's work. That's not the approach that, that Lean provides. Um, that's how a lot of people approach process improvement, unfortunately. So it's one of many different techniques. Other ones have to do with eight forms of waste, looking for the different inefficiencies in a process. Um, the concept of value stream mapping, which looks at all of your processes from end to end, not just what you do in your role, but how does it, that when the customer asks for something to the time the customer gets what they ask for, what are all the major steps it goes through? And the idea is to optimize the entire value stream or the whole system, not what my job is and my tasks, because that could sub-optimize the whole thing. Uh, working on concept like single piece flow, doing one thing at a time, getting it completely done, instead of juggling multiple things at a time, and only working on a little bit, and it takes basically, it delays what your customers will get back from you, because you're, you're juggling too many things. There's some concepts around Kanban, which have to do with waiting for signals or, or indicators from your customer or the next person in the process that they're ready for work. If you're passing off work to somebody and they're not gonna look at it for a week, maybe you should wait to provide your updates because they might come back and say, that's great, but can you update it with the, this week's newest information? So giving um, the next person the work only when they're ready for it, instead of when you're done with it. And then the concept around Kaizen, which is a focus around how do you make um, rapid improvements over a short period of time? So whether it's a half day or a couple hours, or even in their approach, it was five full days of dedicated improvements around a process. So we understand what's going wrong, we actually implement the changes, we see how it's doing, and by the end of the week, it's, um, you have a new process in place, and you're testing out and making sure it works. So those concepts are other things, but 5S is one of the, the first thing to start with because usually the, the issue is no one's really had time to step back and get the workspace organized, and, and, and also the um, file systems. Now what was eight forms of waste? So it, um, it, there's an acronym, Tim Woods, but it's, Stands for transportation, inventory, motion, waiting, overprocessing, overproduction, defects, and then like skills where you're not aligning people's skill set to what they could be doing best. So um, as you're looking at a process or evaluating your own work, you try to identify these things as these are potential inefficiencies that you could take out of the process. So I can I can provide some other information about these if you're interested. I thought Tim Woods was another guy's <laughs> Another guy. <laughs> uh, nope. So let's do a little exercise here. So we're going to do an exercise and we're going to go through using these numbers, uh, the different steps of 5S, just to get you kind of familiar with what it's doing. So um, on your sheet, not, don't open it yet, but we'll have different rounds of numbers. And the idea is to go and find each number in order from 1 to 50. And then as you find number one, cross it off, then look for number two, and then look for number three and cross it off. And so I'll give you about 30 seconds to go through that. And you can just see how far can you get. Ready, three, two, one, begin. Just start crossing off in order, one through 50.
three, two, one. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> How far did you get? Six. 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 Yeah. I'm going to beat six. Or seven. Or seven. <laughs> six. You get a six, too. Or lower. Okay, so. <laughs> So that's kind of current state, we call it. Current situation you walk into and someone says, how do I find all this stuff? Okay, I eventually found it, but is there a more simpler, easier way to do that? And so in the first step of 5S is called sort. And so we go through and we actually, so we're, we've got too much stuff here. And so if you noticed on this, one of the things I said was, we're just going up to 50. 1 through 50, those are the 50 things we use, those numbers. We don't use 51 and beyond. And so sort would say, why do you have 51 through whatever on the page? It's just adding more clutter and you're not, you don't need it. So let's sort out or remove that from the process. So for round two, what they'll do is clean up and take out the unnecessary things out of the area, out of the process out of the system to make less things to have to review and look through. So we're, we're lowering the level and making it a little bit simpler. So for round two, when I tell you to go, we're gonna see if you can go through the same exercise again. Okay, ready, begin. Five seconds. One. Okay, stop. Okay, how'd you do this time? Eight. Hopefully better. Eight? Okay. 16. 16, all right. What'd you get? Nine. To nine. nine, okay. Ten. Ten, okay. Wow. <laughs> so a little bit better. Part of it, you kind of knew where some of the initial numbers were, but also there's less things to have to look at to see if that's the right number or not. So we've decluttered a little bit, taken out the excess numbers. So that's our sort phase. So they call this the red tagging of things. So if it's something physical, we'll actually put a tag on it and say, this is something we don't think is needed. And then we make sure everybody agrees that it should be taken out. Um, in the digital space, we could do the same kind of thing. We can designate a folder that says, you know, potential to remove and have anyone who accesses that folder look it over and say, yep, I agree, I don't think we need it, and then it gets deleted out. So that's the red tag system. And usually we'll do like a, a holding period or some amount of time says you've got 30 days or 60 days to look it over and decide if you want to keep it or not. So then when we get to the set in order and the simplify, we want to organize the space a little bit better. Now that we, we definitely want to have these items here, they're needed files, they're, they're important for us. Now, how do we put them in a, in a more organized manner so that they're easy to find? And so for this, let's put them in some kind of numeric order. So if we go through and, and start now with the third one, go ahead and, uh, begin with going through and checking how far you can get. So start. <laughs> okay, you get the idea. It's much simpler and easier to go through now and find the orders as you got some structure to it and then it's uh, more logical. And so usually this is where a lot of people stop and they say, great, I'm, I'm much more organized. I got rid of some stuff. I reorganized my space. And I'm good to go. And so we want to go to another step and get even more uh, detailed in this. So for the third one, what we're going to go to and look at is how do we um, get things more consistent look and feel? How do we um, color code? How do we organize? And, uh, and even more efficiently. So you have different sizes there, you have different orientations on there. How do we get them in looking the same direction? 
Um, we're not going to go through the steps here, but you can look at um, the last slide here. Now they made the sizes a little bit more consistently. These are actually like each row is color coded. Um, now if we go through this and I want you to, to spend um, 30 seconds starting now, I want you to see if there's anything, any problems you identify out of this order in the one to 50. So what do you notice that's, that's wrong? What's that? Mm -hmm. Yep. So what's out of place or what's not right about this structure that you think should be correct? 24, 34 swapped. Okay. It's 24 and 34 swapped, right? What else? 39 is missing. 2 is missing. 24 is an inconsistent typeface. Right. Okay. 16 is pushed up. 16 is off. Yep. 46 is at an angle. 46 is crooked. Yep. What else? Overall, they're all different fonts, so it would be more efficient I think, if they were all. Yeah, it depends how they're using it, the rows. Yeah, right. If the rows mean something or. Yeah. There's a couple, there's one more. Oh, oh, there's a two sixes instead of a nine. On the first row, yep. So either nine's upside down or there's two oh, sixes. Yeah. And then there's another one. Oh, 11 and 12. Right. Yeah, now 11 and 12 are out of place. 16, 39, yep, 36. Good. Okay, so now it's easier to tell. There's the, the color coding, there's the fonts, there's the space holders, placeholders for certain things that should be there. If they were all run together, if you didn't have the open spaces, it would be a little harder to tell. Um, even like the 21 and 22 is a little tricky because they're close. But it does stand out. That there's something not right about that once you see that. So again, a, a ability to detect when things are out of place or look strange is also part of this. So you need to catch that right away. Versus, if you were if you were to start with the first sheet I gave you and say, look for the missing number out of one out of fifty, you have to look through this for a while before you found that number forty six is not on there. You know, so that that makes it much more difficult, especially if you're trying to dig into some problems or issues. So let's talk through, so, um, so before there's a lot of excess, there's uh, items, there's too many things that don't need to be there, and then you spend time going through all those unnecessary things to get to the stuff you really want. It takes up more area, either physical space or digital space. It's cluttered and it's difficult to handle. Afterwards, you've got the correct items, you reduce the search time, it's a smaller footprint or area, it's clean, neat and organized, and then it's easier to work in that space. Okay, so, um, so it's not overly complex how to do this, especially the first couple steps. As you get further into it, the, the discipline of doing that is it gets a little more, um, uh, takes a little bit more time to do, but um, once you've done it, then that investment will pay off for you in the long run. So, it just takes carving out some time to spend on that. That's why I want to spend a little bit of time today doing that. And then setting up some regular reviews or cadence on your own schedule. Say, okay, every once a month, I'm going to go back and work on another folder. And I would prioritize this. So if you try to tackle it as a huge effort, say I'm going to go through all my files, it's going to be daunting and overwhelming. So pick the ones that are going to be the most frequently used folders and files and let's work on those and then slowly you'll gain most of the benefits without it being such a daunting task. So, um, so start to kind of think about when is a good time for me in my schedule to carve out time to, to do a little bit of organization around this. And that includes your garage and well, your physical workspaces. Do you have any comments or thoughts on that? I know you work with home organizi organizing, mm -hmm. is there? Yeah, schedules? this is totally resonating right now it's really hard to keep the momentum going with clients because it takes a long time. It can take a long time. So that's what I was thinking. Business. Hmm? <laughs> recurring business. Yeah, yeah, it's a long process. And I think a lot of folks kind of get really overwhelmed or they want to drop out, you know, throughout the process. But that's something that I definitely try to emphasize. So I was reflecting on my role as yeah, a yeah. coach and facilitator. Yeah. 
it's a long journey. Yeah, it's not an it overnight thing you can do. No. So, you're right on. You know, this is something that becomes a habit once you do it 30 days in a row. Until then, it's not. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. I believe that. So on the first sheet, the handout, that's the overview we're going to go through. Um, so let me touch on the other steps real quick here. So um, well, well, we'll touch on them here, but these are the five steps, and these are just some bullets to kind of remember what goes and what gets done in each of those steps. So you can refer back to them as we're going through the exercise today. So to start with, um, have you thought through maybe a folder or a, a space that you'd like to work on? Um, could be a hard drive. Could be something in the cloud like your Google Drive or another file share, or if, where you store photos, like iCloud or other photo services. Could be your email list that maybe needs to be cleaned up and um, more organized in a way that allows you to better segment your list, um, know who's in there, that type of thing. So it should be um, something that's more manageable that we can go through today. Um, because you, you may, we're not, may not be able to get through all of it. So don't take your entire drive, but maybe pick, like I dug into three or four levels down and then picked a specific folder in there that had, you know, a couple hundred files in there that I could go through and kind of quickly evaluate. And then probably something that you control. It's not something you're sharing with a team because, again, that's another level of um, complexity to this is when you share a shared folder. Then you would do a lot more... Um, of a team effort to go through that, or you'd have to do a lot more review and, and um, segmentation to say, here's what I think, but um, some people come in and then clean up afterwards. So there's just a lot of people in it at the same time. It can be a little more uh, difficult, but it's, it's, it's still effective approach. Someone kind of have some ideas or thoughts about what they would do? Now, what do you, how do you handle if you got kind of a huge job, gigabytes? So, <laughs> I, is there some kind of way to automate this? Is there some tool that kind of asks you questions and sorts your folders for you? Um, I haven't seen one. There may be. The only thing I've seen maybe is like a duplication, like, hey, these files are similar or almost identical. Do you want to keep both copies? Um, so, the only thing I try to do is like shortcuts to other, like, this could also be in this other folder. So trying to set up some shortcuts to say, check this other folder too. Yeah. So that, that'll get into some of the sustainment and standardization that says, okay, if there is a tagging system on the files, is how do you get into the discipline of your process to say, when I put these in here, I'm going to add these tags in. If that's the way that you're gonna more easily find some of these records. Um, right. Or the naming conventions that we're talking about in the standardization would be, I know it's going to have this type of structure, so I can, when I do search, it's going to have a better shot at finding them because right. I've got the discipline around the naming of it. Right. That's some of the harder stuff that people kind of skip, and then, um, but once you do that, you really start to see some gains there. Okay, so kind of have some thoughts on maybe which folder you want to try out. Like how many files approximately? I wouldn't do, do more than a hundred or two hundred. Oh, okay. Yes, even if it's like 50. The idea is just kind of go through the processes today and then we'll, yeah. um, we can always go back and take on a bigger challenge later. So uh, one thing, if you're really concerned about, I'm afraid of deleting or um, do, making a mistake, um, one thing you can do is create a duplicate of the file, or oh, the folder first. And then you can feel really comfortable about deleting and, and moving stuff around and not worrying about it too much. So you can either make a new folder and copy everything into that, or you can just set up another folder somewhere on your desktop or wherever, copy that over and then make that the one you're gonna play around with. So you always have the real one still sitting there. And then once you're comfortable with that, you can replace it or whatever you wanna do there. But some, I find that works a little bit better. People are more, willing to delete stuff off when they know that it's not actually being deleted yet. And then they have a little bit of time. So um, that's something you could do right now is to duplicate or copy this folder and then work from the copy for today. One thing I usually do when I do something like that is I rename it with a little word after the end of it that says edit. 
So I know that it's a folder that I'm actually working and making changes in. So okay. I won't have redundant files of the same name that I accidentally merged and lose data in the wrong place. Yeah, good idea, thanks. The other thing you wanna do is once you've done that, um, or as you're doing that, is to capture the current situation and the metrics. And so you can capture other things, but the main thing is how much space is being used up, how many files are there, and how many folders you have. So. If you're on a PC, you could do properties. I'm not sure what Apple or Macs have for getting to the properties of the folder to figure mm -hmm. out the space and size. Or consider if I tackle pictures instead of. Go for it. Yeah. Okay. That's like the <laughs> <laughs> Do you know on Google Drive if there's. Uh, on the folder, I think if you click, if you highlight the folder, is there like some metrics on the side, maybe that have information about the folder? You might have to open up like a, another pane or something like that, but I don't recall exactly. Can you right click and get a properties field, Daniel? There's a view details, but I don't have. Like, Doesn't have that type of mm -mm. data there. Mm -hmm. I could pick something else. You could, yeah, yeah or if it doesn't that. take too long, you could just count the files and the folders. Um, you may not have the space, per se. Okay. <laughs> subfolder. And this is just for your own cracking. If you don't really care that much, or you're not trying to highlight that, then this is just for your own purpose. So um, it's kind of an optional step for you to do. But yeah, that's the last sheet on here is a worksheet. You could fill that out of your baseline. So this would be the before metrics. And any other metrics you wanted to capture about that. Um, if you wanted to go and actually time out how long it takes you to find certain things in there, you have a specific picture you're looking for, how long would it take you to find it today? You know, you could time it, do a little quick study and then mm -hmm. record before and then afterwards you could try it out. So again, those are just additional things you could do if you wanted to get better metrics or track uh, how much time savings you're actually gonna get from it. But by no means is that required. But it is nice to go back and kind of see the progress. If you're helping somebody out, for sure, I would have them do that. Danielle, Command I gives you information on Max in case you wanna try that. I don't have a Mac anymore. <laughs> Nothing on the Google Drive. How to get that? I'll look at that too. I'm not. I haven't tried that. Okay. So once you capture that, then here's that worksheet. You could fill that out um, if you want to. This is another thing I found that was fairly helpful, especially if I'm trying to cut out space. It's called WinderStat. This is on a PC. I think there might be an uh, another version too, but. Apple. The, um, the pictures at the bottom, that, those are the size of the files. So when you click on the, the large pictures here, it shows you which file is taking up that space. So then you can evaluate those and decide if, if I want to chop away at some of these bigger ones if you're really looking for space reductions. Um, surprised that they haven't incorporated that into normal PCs and yeah. computers by now because it's very helpful. Um, so yeah, the, the size of the boxes tell you how big the files are. So some of those things like maybe if you're just worried about space, I'm not going to spend time going through those thousands of files if they're all very small, mm -hmm. but I really might look at these and say, do I want to compress those down or do I want to delete them or, um, do something to them to, or maybe I still need them. I just need to know which ones are the most important. And I can send you guys these slides too when we're done and the game, if you like the game. The way I use things like this is just to let me figure out what's on a big hard drive. It's like, all right, there's a whole bunch of stuff over here. What kind of stuff is that? And I just right. go and look at a few files. And then there's all this stuff that looks different. You know, what, what is it? Is that like DVD? Files, photos. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a good way. Instead of scanning through each one, get a snapshot of it. Yeah. It's just another, another perspective of what's on your, your hard drive. This also may help if you look at your whole hard drive. You could do this to say, all right, these are the folders I want to focus on. Maybe because there's a big amount of space, 
So that's another way to kind of prioritize where you're focused on. Okay, so under the sort phase, we're gonna basically start with either keep it or delete it or trash it, or uh, I'm not sure yet, I can't decide. So we want to make this fairly quick decision. And um, so I would go through and kind of look at those files and say, yep, delete out. And unfortunately, sometimes you have to open them up and look at individual files to see if that's exactly, you know, what is this and do I actually need this or not? Um, so look for some obvious things that can be deleted out that are duplicates or like under photos, it came out blurry or it looks identical to the other one next to it. Do I really need to keep it? Um, and then the not sure one is, I think I want to get rid of it, but I'm not quite sure yet. And so I want to sit, I'm going to think about it some more or sit on it. So you can, you can create different folders for that. So the keep is, I'm just going to keep it there. I'm not going to organize it yet. We'll get to that point. And then the, the trash would be definitely, I don't need this. It's, I want to just delete it off. And then the not sure is where, basically we're going to come up with a, a plan that says, I'm going to keep that in the not sure for some amount of time. And at the end of this time, I'm going to make a decision either one month or three months or one week or six months or a year. <laughs> if I never access that file or if I don't even look at it, maybe then I'm going to, feel confident in deleting it out or removing it. So you can put a maybe folder and then decide when you're going to revisit that. So same thing on the physical side is you mark it, let's say it's your garage and you're looking at it and you say, I'm gonna tag this and if I never use this tool by next year, then I'm gonna go donate it or recycle it or give it to somebody in the neighborhood or sell it um, because obviously I'm not using it. Same thing with clothes, you know, hey, I've never worn this and in two years, why am I still holding it in my closet? It's not something that's important. Okay, so that's the sort of process. So we'll, I'll go through these steps. You can kind of work through this as we're going, but um, then I'll leave some time here at the end that we can spend the last 30 minutes or so actually going through those steps. So simplify would be um, actually getting the organization that you want and, and making the things that you use most often, most frequent, the easiest to find. So maybe, that's the first folder is the, the, the files that you use the most frequent. And so, you know, you can go right in that folder, go right to that section and find the ones that you recurringly use over and over again. Or you can create shortcuts on your desktop or quick links somehow. Some way to get to those most frequently used files because that's where you're gonna get the most time savings. So you can quickly get to those um, frequently used files. If you, if you wanna keep files, but you don't want to keep them in that drive, but you want to have access to them. Maybe you're keeping them, but they don't need to be with the other files that you're sorting through. So maybe they go into some other backup storage or on a cloud storage or um, an external hard drive or um, a different directory altogether. But what you're trying to do is if I'm going to use this folder quite a bit, I just want to get rid of stuff I'm not actually going to use. So I'm keeping it, but I don't need to keep it in that specific location. So thing, same thing like with a garage, you would have, all right, I want to keep this, but I don't need it today and I don't need it right now. I'm going to take it to external storage or I'm going to uh, find a new place to store it because it's cluttering up my garage that I use a lot. So maybe that goes in the basement or something out of place that I, I'm, I'm going to use only in, very infrequently. So the things I'm going to use most often need to be closest to me. The things I rarely use should be furthest away from me. Same thing with the, the drives. And then coming up more logical formatting. So it could be the naming I use. It could be like a numbering system to put things in sorted, some kind of sorted order. So I use number numbering system if I want, you know, the first folder to be something specific and it's not, you're just going to sort by alphabetical. So I'm going to put a one in front of it and that just puts it at the top. One, two, three, four, you know, something like that. But some other way that you could set up this, the format of it that's more logical. Maybe it matches some processes that you have or some documentation. How you're naming it or how you're, how you're setting up that is just easy, making it easy for you to find <laughs> the information you need. Or uh, sorting. One, one thing I found that's really uh, it's borderline, you know, silly, but uh, it works. It makes a big difference is when you have a date. 
right? It, you're 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 amongst amongst the way. so the you're then then they then it's sorted numerically and alphabetically. Yeah. So yeah. if you go month day and you know the ones game is it's, it's all over the place. <laughs> yeah. So it sucks, but yep. it, it just takes a, a habit, you know. So you go your first and then month and then day. Especially if you work with Europe where dates are day then month then year. Yeah. And here it's month, day, year. It's it's always a a big uh, confusion. <laughs> yes. But if you always do like getting the habit of anything, year, month, day, yeah. solid alphabetically, numerically, and then no confusion with your so yeah, the few have like photos that could be by date, or you could have it by locations or type, you know. So the simplified part again is really trying to make it so you can find things easier or other people if it's a shared location can find it fairly easy so when they were doing it with like a team environment it's it's always it's it's always a challenge to get everyone to agree on the same naming convention so that's something um it's going to tend to spend a lot more time talking through um and and a lot of times we'll spend a lot of time on the whiteboard going through the logic of the naming and the folder names so that people will kind of resonate with that before we go in and change all the names around and then say, oh, that's not how I was thinking about it. I thought it was by uh, customer, then by product, not product by customer, you know. So if you have a team, it just adds to the complexity, but it almost makes it more important that you have to go through that because uh, everyone's got their own ideas about that, how it's done. So that's a simplify route. Then the shine is actually like cleaning everything out um, and that can get into some more technical stuff, but um, Defragging folders, um, emptying out the trash, uh, actually cutting down the space or storage limits that you have. So now I've cut cut out this in half. Now I'm going to, um, you know, limit that some in some way, perhaps if you want. Uh, maybe even compressing the space, uh, taking some files and compressing them down. Um, taking images. Say I don't need it in you know a six megabyte photo. Um, I just want, you know, two megabytes. So taking things and just cutting the space down and say, this is really all I need it for. I'm going to put it on the web. I'm not going to print, print it out and make it high resolution digital photo. So, so, so we've decided we want to keep it. It's in, now it's organized. And now do I, how much do I really need it at? If it's a big video file, do I need the whole video? Can I cut out the back part of it? Cause that's not really important. So getting into this very probably more specifics around individual files too. Then also, if you have technical background on the space, is just making sure the drive is cleaned up and updated, and um, can kind of flushing out some of the backup files that are sitting through there. So this um, this is probably a more important step as you're talking about physical work environment. So you're actually like wiping down stuff, painting walls fixing things that are broke, you know, those getting things in a nice working order. Then the standardization, you mentioned already about file, file naming conventions. Um, there's some tips there for um, coming up with better file names. And then uh, going back and kind of labeling and, and um, marking things and putting them in that structure. So that might mean you have to go in and, and rename individual files, but then you're starting to set up that structure that is gonna carry on from that point. So there can be some effort there, but that's going to help for future searching and, and finding. And it doesn't have to be manual. Something like reading files like in the data format that as you mentioned, you can just write a script to, to do that. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, if you know how to do that, that's even better. I think, yeah, you can like copy, you can copy um, or highlight a bunch of files and rename them all at once, and then it just adds a one a number to the back end of it. Um, if you want a certain structure and you don't need the details, like a bunch of fo fo uh, photos, you could do that where you're not labeling who's in the photo specifically, but unless that's part of your naming convention you want to add. <laughs> and then um, if you have your own drive or if you have a shared drive, there might be different rules or guidelines you want to set up for how you're managing the storage, uh, the control of the files, you know, the backups, who has the ability to make updates or changes or revisions to it permissions, all those things can get into this discussion. Um, but that's important for maintaining the organization structure of it is if everybody's going in and creating their own versions or um, 
yeah, um, if you've ever dealt with like a network drive where multiple people are in there, you can see it fairly quickly gets out of hand when everyone has free reign to do whatever they want. So I've got a big archiving task to do, organizing task with, I've got Linux, I've got Apple and Windows. Um, my impression is I probably want to move everything to Linux because it doesn't change with new versions of the operating system. Okay. Uh, it seems to be pretty pretty constant. I can work with a Linux file that's 30 years old, but I go Windows file from 20 years ago, forget it. You know? mm -hmm. Do any, does anybody run into this problem? Like, if I want something that's, that I can use 10 years from now, and there's going to be all these operating system changes, which, what do I do? Yes, now? I guess. <laughs> There's also a uh, program, if you want to get fancier and make color coding, I did find this program that will allow you to change the colors on a PC. Maybe the Apple has other features already in there, but um, yeah. if you wanted to color code it by, you know, uh, colors where the colors mean something, then it's a, a vis another visual indicator that you can scan quickly and go right to where you want. Um, that's, that's also stuff that would get brought up during standardization. Yellow means this, white means this, green means this, blue means this. So either in a physical space or in a digital space, they have different meanings. And then that's, again, another visual indicator. They also have different icon changes you can make that you want to get into more specifics there, but I just gave a couple examples here. So then the sustain part is really uh, how do you get new people familiar with the structure? Is there, you know, before you just get someone access, there's going to be maybe a little bit of training or a little bit of uh, guidelines that they have to go through. Say, here's how we name things. Here's how we organize things. Here's what gets stored here. You know, here's what should not be stored here. It's really come up with some rules and guidelines and standards around how that drive or that location is used. Or it's just for you, then it's your own uh, process. Says, here's how I'm going to start putting new files into here. Because um, we can get it all cleaned up, but then the next day, if you start loading it the old way like you've been doing it, it's going to quickly turn into uh, disorganization again. And then some regular schedule to kind of review and look through what's in there, make sure it's all maintaining the way you want it to be maintained. Um, and then monitoring the folder or the drive, say, okay, make sure the space isn't getting filled up or the number of files isn't getting too large or um, just kind of keeping an eye on the, the whatever metrics that you think are important. And maybe you do some checks every once in a while, see how long does it take every time I'm looking for a file, am I still able to find it fairly quickly? Um, so maybe it's not even monitoring that system, it's maybe a new folder. And then that's gonna help you decide where I'm gonna spend my effort on the next area to clean up and organize. But the, this is a, a difficult step that often gets left out because it's, as we get further in these steps, you, you get away from the fun stuff of sorting and organizing, and then you get into the, the I would call it the less exciting part of maintaining and putting in the discipline and rigor around those. And that's why usually a lot of people get stuck around the second, maybe the third step of this process. Um, these are just a couple of reasons. So let me finish up then, and then you guys can decide if you want to hang out or take off. So the minimalist podcast is good. I don't know if anyone listened to that or heard that. So it's just about really understanding what things you value and, and not to get rid of everything, but only keep the stuff that's really valuable, important to you. So that mindset is really good. And that would help you not only on the digital stuff, but the physical things. Um, Marie Kondo book is a very popular one about um, having organization at home. And so there's a lot of similar, it's not the exact same process she goes through. She has some uh, different um, ways in which she approaches certain areas of the home based on the, uh, the emotional tie to it, I guess. So a lot of the digital stuff, maybe you don't have, but maybe the photos, there's a lot of emotional tie to it too. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's some stuff on 5S from a group called Creative Safety Supply. That's, if you're looking for supplies to help with actually organizing like a, more like an industrial area, they have some good stuff. And then um, a local lady, Gwendolyn Galsworth, has a really good perspective on making the work not only just organized, but very visual and, and make it obvious what's going on. So she kind of takes 5S to like a whole new level with the signage and the labels and the colors and the creativity around it. So um, she's got some really good work on there. And that's the organization that I'm setting up here. So I'm really focusing on trying to do process improvement with helping groups do environmental improvements, 
try to reduce their footprint or their uh, chemical usage or waste. And then we also have a group, Lean Portland, that does some work with nonprofits and helping them get more organized. So we're, we're just starting some work with like Free Geek, trying to help them process more laptops each day or get through the backlog of mobile devices and, and a lot of inventory they have in backlog and they just can't, their processes aren't set up to get through what's coming in the door. They're getting more donations and they're getting out the door. So we're doing some work with them and a lot of these same concepts of 5S is what we're starting with because it's just not very clear where, what's going on in these different areas. So that's been really fun work. And then you have handouts. So that's all I had today. Is there any other questions? Yeah, thanks for coming.